Thank you, worship team. I'm so thankful for all those that uh, stand on the stage, that work the desk, that work upstairs uh, to make us. We really don't sound that good, and they make us sound so, so good. So we're so thankful for them. Well, welcome. My name is Dwayne Allen, and today I've got the honor of filling in for our pastor. Uh, he's away this weekend with Cheryl, celebrating their anniversary. And uh, I don't get the opportunity to preach that often, uh, so it's just a privilege to be able to stand here to deliver a message from God to you today. And, and uh, our message on the screen says uh, today is called Three Truths About God and You. If I all of a sudden burst out singing or something, that's just what I'm comfortable doing, all right? Uh, but uh, I'm just going to cover simple truths from God's Word, uh, truths that you already know. That you just be, need to be reminded of things that we all need uh, and all need to cling to throughout our lives as Christians. And uh, as an introduction, well, let's turn over to Psalm chapter 139. Flip over there in your Bibles to Psalm 139. I don't have a lot of stories today. Uh, I don't have a lot of humor, uh, although I never know what I might say. Um, but uh, it's really just a whole lot from God's Word. Is that okay with you? Yes. Uh, because that's really what it's all about, uh, hearing from the Lord, all right? So Psalm 139, uh, verses 23 and 24 say, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me, O oh God. My prayer today is that you'll allow God to just do that, to search you, to speak to you, to stir you just a little bit, and make you more like Jesus all in the process. So join with me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you and it's just so good to know that you are our Father, to call you Father, to be able to call out to you on the best of days and on the worst of days and know that you are there. We come before your throne, we come there humbly, knowing that it was nothing that we did that allowed us to be there. It was the blood of your Son that you sacrificed for us that allows us to have a relationship with you. And so I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for this, for this opportunity, and I just ask that you would speak through me, uh, this uh, audience, these dear ones that I love, uh, need to hear from you, not from me, because you love them so much more than I do. And so I ask that the name of Jesus would be honored and glorified, and just that we'll have a sweet time in your presence as we continue worshiping you over your word. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Three truths about God and you. But before I jump into God and you, just so there's no confusion, and since there are many false gods out there, I want to make sure to clarify which God I'm talking about. When I use the term God, I'm talking about the God of the Bible, Almighty God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Adonai, El Shaddai, Elohim, Emmanuel, the living God, the one true living God, the God that spoke creation into existence, the God that breathed life into man, the God that parted the Red Sea, and the God that used prophets and priests and kings and humble servants to do extraordinary things through his might. And his power. Amen. The God that I'm talking about is so good. God is love. And God is light. He is omnipotent. He's full of power, all powerful, and he has unlimited power. He's omniscient. He's all knowing, all knowing, and he's got unlimited wisdom and knowledge. And he's omnipresent, all present or everywhere at once. He's the righteous judge. He does all things with wisdom and might. He works miracles. 
His character is to continually give, and this was proven best with the sacrifice of his only begotten son, Jesus. He is in control, and he is even in control of those that are in control. So no matter what side of the aisle you fall on here in November, whoever becomes president, God is still in control of those that are in control. He gets things done right every time, every time. He's on the throne of heaven, and one day we'll all stand before him. So when I talk about God and you, that's the God I'm talking about. That's the God I'm talking about. He's so good. He is so good. Amen. Now, a lot of pastors have lengthy introductions, and this is one of those, all right? <laughs> so, friends, I'm here today. I, I just want to encourage you. I just want to remind you of things that you may have known for years, all right? Our God, this amazing God, he knows you, and he loves you, and he wants you. He wants to be with you. He wants a relationship with you. So let me challenge you just a little bit. Maybe you're in the midst of suffering or sorrow or loss. Allow God to speak to you to bring comfort to you today, healing, direction that you might need. Maybe you've fallen into a state of complacency. Allow God to speak to you and to stir your heart once again, to refresh you and reignite the passion that you had for him at one time. If you feel desperate and alone, unworthy of God's love, allow him to speak to you today with a message that he is forgiving, that he is gracious, and that he is merciful, and that he wants a relationship with you regardless of your past. Maybe you're following God and things are going great. Well, God also wants to give you a message today to keep at it, to continually and humbly serve him because he's worthy of all that labor that you do. And then finally, if you've never taken the step to follow Jesus, listen so carefully today at the message of how great God is, of how much he loves you, and how much he longs to have a relationship with you. He longs to have a relationship with you. So are you ready for the first truth about you and God? How about the rest of you? Are you ready? Okay, all right. I'm, I'm used to teaching with a lot of interaction, and so preaching's a little out of my comfort zone, all right? The first truth. God knows you. Pretty simple, right? But it's really deep. God knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows the good and the bad. So turn with me to Psalm, or you're already in Psalm 139, uh, and let's look at a few more verses in Psalm 139. The first four. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me, Thou knowest my down-sitting, mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my thought afar off. Thou, thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. God has searched us. God knows us. God knows when we sit. God knows when we stand. God knows when we lay down. God knows when we're on the journey, right? He knows us. He understands our thoughts. He surrounds us as we go out, go throughout our day, as we sleep at night. And not only does God hear everything that we say, he knows what we're going to say before we even say it. God knows us. Let's look at verses 5 through, uh, through 13. I don't have these on the screen, um, but you're, we're right here. So just look at these as I read those. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. 
Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed me, my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. He goes on to tell us there in that passage that God is with us all the time. He's with us all the time. We can't get away from him. We can't get away. No matter how far we try to run, no matter when we try to hide from him, he's always there. But you know what? That's a comfort to us to know that our God is right there with us no matter where we go. God knows us. And on the screen here in verses 14 through 18, King David continues and he says, I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in all thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. What a passage, what a passage. We can praise God because we're fearfully and wonderfully made by him and in his image. What God did creating us was remarkable. Remarkable. God knew us from the time that we were made in secret. When we were conceived, God knew us. He fashioned all the parts of our body together, made them. He knit us together in our mother's wombs. And before he ever knew us, he thought of us. He thought of us and knew how he would make us. That's how deeply God knows us. That's pretty deep, isn't it? Verses 17 and 18 go on to speak of how we're continually in God's thoughts. Think about that for just a second. The God of this universe, almighty God, has you on his mind. He thinks about you so much that it says there in this passage, it's like the number, trying to number the sand. That's how much he thinks about you. Amazing. He has us on his mind. His thoughts about us are innumerable. He is with us. The God of all creation knows us. Just let that sink in for a minute. God knows you. God knows you. This almighty God that I spoke of earlier knows you. Look at all of these scriptures here. Just write them down real fast or take a picture of something because I'm going to go fast, all right? Study them out later. We covered the first two in Psalm 139. Jeremiah 1.5, just like Psalm 139, tells us that God knew us had a plan for us before we ever came out of our mother's womb. Jeremiah 17 tells us that God searches our hearts and tries us or tests us. One of my favorite verses, Nahum 1-7 says that the Lord is a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. Luke 12 tells us that God knows the smallest of details about us, even the number of hairs on our heads, and he didn't have to count long to count mine. Right? That's okay, easy maintenance. All right. Second Chronicles 16:9 tells us that the eyes of the Lord are over the entire earth, and He's looking to show Himself to those whose hearts follow Him. Job 42 tells us that God can do anything that He wants to do. 
and there's no thought in us that he doesn't know. Isaiah 43 and Exodus 33 tell us God calls us by name and that we are his. God knows my name. The God of this universe knows my name. The God of this universe knows your name. What a thought. He knows your name. Sean, the God of this universe knows your name. He knows your name. Aaron, the God of this universe knows your name. Mackenzie knows your name. God knows your name. Michael, he knows your name. He knows your name. Everybody's like. <laughs> Brianna, he knows your name. I'm so thankful God knows me. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. So let me wrap this first truth up a little bit. Let me, let me reemphasize a few of these things in case you hadn't gotten it yet. God knows you. He created you wonderfully in his image. He knows when you get up. He knows when you lie down. He knows when you're on the mountaintops. He knows when you're in the valley, when everything's falling apart, when you feel like a hot mess. God is there. He knows you. Ever felt that way? He knows your name. He knows your heart. He knows your strengths. He knows your weaknesses. He knows and cares about the smallest details of your life, like I said, the hairs of your head even. He sees when you do the right things. He sees when you fail. He sees you in all of your sin. He sees when you make mistakes and stumble and fall. He sees you when you go through those times of loss. Whew, those are difficult, aren't they? Those times of loss. This past week, I had the first birthday I've ever had without my father. That's tough. The last time I stood in this pulpit to deliver a message was six weeks ago for the funeral of a 27-year-old man that played softball with us for years, co-ed and men's softball. That's hard. That's lost. A family friend for so long. We go through those times, but God knows that, and God wants to be with us. And wants to strengthen us and comfort us and give us hope during those times. That's the only way I can stand here today. It was a struggle to be here because of that. He knows us, which brings me to the second truth. He knows us, but he loves us. He knows us, but he loves us. God knows you, and yet God loves you. Whew, let that sink in for a moment. He knows all about you, and he loves you. He loves you. He's seen us on our worst days. He's seen us when we're hateful and prideful and lustful and dishonest, and he still loves us. He's seen us when we're out of control and filled with anger and critical of others, but he still loves us. He's seen us fail time and time again. And he continues to love us. He sees the hidden sin, our rotten thoughts, the selfishness in our hearts. And he still loves us. This is our great God. This is an amazing kind of love. Unconditional love. Oh, how deep the Father's love is for us. What love he has. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, beautiful, beautiful verses here. Apostle Paul writing. He says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, or brought us life, gave us life. He quickened us together by Christ, with Christ. By grace are you saved. 
that they have this wonderful, merciful Savior who is rich in mercy. God's great love for us was demonstrated that he sent Jesus to die for our sins. Even when we were dead in those sins, he loved us and quickened us together with Christ. This is the love of God. He takes unholy sinners and he makes them holy and righteous. It's so hard for me to comprehend that, but I'm so glad that he does. He takes something and, and makes something so beautiful for his honor and for his glory. He takes dead men and women and gives them eternal life. Eternal life. Come on. I'm so glad that his love lifted me, right? Eternal life. And a side note, if you got eternal life, it means just that. It's eternal. You can't lose it. It's everlasting. You can't lose it. It's eternal. He takes our sin and he washes us clean, forgives us. Oh, what love the Father has bestowed upon us. Aren't you glad, Christian, that he knows you and still loves you, right? I'm so thankful. But you know what? There's more. Look at this. Jeremiah 31.3 tells us God loves us with an everlasting love, a love with no end. Psalm 86 says that God is full of compassion, full of grace for you, long-suffering when you go astray, and he's got plenty of mercy for you every single day. 1 John 3 tells us his love was proven when Jesus laid down his life for ours. Romans 8 tells us that God loved us and adopted us into his family. Adopted us into his family. One of the best days of my life was when I adopted Brittany into our family. To be a dad to her and our other kids and our grandkids now. Who such a joy. Such a joy. I just pr pray that they've seen just a little glimpse of the love of God in me. Adopted. We've been adopted by God the Father into his family. He calls us his own children. You are a child of God if you've come to know Jesus. Verse 17 there in Romans 8 says that we're even joint heirs with Jesus. Joint heirs. I've got the privilege of calling God Father, and I have an inheritance waiting for me. I didn't deserve any of that. That's a special kind of love. That's a special kind of love, an everlasting love. I have the love of God forever. Psalm 103 tells us that our God is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy and so forgiving. It says that the love of God removes our transgressions and throws them as far as the east is from the west. And he remembers them no more. If you've been washed by the blood of Jesus, Father God sees you through the filter of the blood that he shed, and he sees you as holy and righteous because of what Jesus did, because of the blood of Jesus. Whew. Man, that's something we should never get over, right? So, so, so thankful. Come on, Christian, you're, you're loved by Almighty God. You've got to get excited, right? Yeah, give me a woo every once in a while. That's right. <laughs> One more verse as we finish this truth. You uh, know this verse. It might be the first verse you've ever memorized. John 3, 16. But I want you to really just meditate on it today, like it's the first time you've read it. Because we can read scripture that we know and just kind of go right by it. Think about this for just a moment. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life 
God loved the world so much that he gave Jesus as a sacrifice for us. This is love. God is love. And he showed it, he proved it, he demonstrated it by giving us his son. Our sacrifice took away our sin, paid the price that we owed. He did that for the entire world, even for those that would reject him. He did that so that we could have forgiveness and eternal life and a relationship with him. All we have to do is believe in him, it says there. Cry out to him for forgiveness to save you. God sacrificed Jesus because of his great love for us. His great love for us. It doesn't get any better than that. I'm so thankful that the God of all gods is filled with unfailing love for me. Oh, it overwhelms me. I'm so glad he has showered me with compassion. He's adopted me into his family. I'm so glad he loves people like me. I'm so glad he loves people like you. God knows you and God loves you. He always has and he always will. But you know what? His love doesn't just stop at salvation. There's more. Which brings us to our third and final truth of the day. God knows everything about you, the good and the bad, and yet he loves you with an everlasting love, a love that sent his son Jesus to die for you, but it doesn't stop there. He wants you. He wants a close relationship with you that he calls by name. He wants a relationship with you he wants to provide for you all the love and the protection and the blessings and the benefits that a good parent would give to their children. God wants to be with you. He, he made us to have relationships. He made us, he didn't want us to be alone. He, he wanted us to have community. He wanted us to have fellowship with one another, to share life together with our families and our friends to be unified, to work together, to make an impact for his kingdom. I'm so thankful for those relationships. I've got people in this room that I know love me so dearly. I'm so thankful for. But you know what? Those relationships, while they're so good, they don't compare to the relationship that I have with God the Father. God Almighty wants me. He wants to be with me. Oh, so good, isn't he? He's so good. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3. Uh, I've actually, I've got them on the screen. Matthew 23 and Psalm 63. Look at these verses. Jesus is writing here. He's nearing the end of his life. Jesus is speaking here. He's nearing the end of his life, and he's looking over Jerusalem with tears, and he says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. That's a sad, sad verse. It shows the love of Jesus. Tears for Jerusalem, the benefits and the blessings that they would have had had they just followed him. And he uses this uh, illustration of a hen with her chickens, little chicks. And she shelters them under her wings. And, and a, little, uh, a little hen, uh, some of you guys I know have chickens in, in this audience, they make all these clucking sounds. Anybody want to demonstrate that? Okay. But like a hen will make these clucking sounds whenever she senses danger and she lifts up her wings and all the little chicks, they might be running all over the yard, but when they hear that mama saying there's danger, they come running and they find shelter underneath her wings. And Jesus uses this illustration that he wished 
that Israel would have done that so that he could have provided the shelter that they needed. And hey, a little side note from our discussion today, the Holy Spirit of God inside of you will warn you, will convict you, will say, hey, be careful right there. Hey, don't say that. Hey, there's danger ahead. And what should you do? Run to be under the wings of the Almighty to find shelter and protection from all of the danger that's out there, spiritually speaking. Are you with me, church? Get close to him, as close to him as you can get. Psalm 63 says, Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. And this is found throughout Scripture, talking about finding shelter, under the wings of God Almighty. Six times just in the book of Psalms. God wants to shelter you and protect you and keep you close and give you a reason to rejoice. He wants to provide for you, to give you strength, blessings, power, and peace, and comfort, and everything that you need to have a fruitful and God-honoring life. But this last truth is a little different from the first two. God will always know us, God will always love us, and God will always want a relationship with us. But he's left this last part up to you. You're going to determine how close you really are to God and whether or not you have a relationship with God. That's on you. It's a little different from the first two. Rest assured, he always wants to be with you. You've got to want to be with him. He leaves that choice and how deep that relationship is going to be up to you. Look at this list of scriptures. Matthew 6, we read the, or we read the first two. And in Matthew 6, God promised to give us everything that we need if we seek his kingdom and his righteousness first. That's on us to seek that first. Romans 8 says that all things work together for our good if... We love God if we're called according to his purpose. That's on us. Do we love God? Psalm 145 tells us the Lord will be near us if we call on him. Sometimes we like to hang on to all of our trials and our troubles and our burdens and we carry around these invisible backpacks that are just so heavy laden. And we need to cry out to God. He's there. He wants to lift those burdens from you, but you got to let him. You got to go to him and cry out to him. He wants to be so close to you. 1 Peter 5 and Psalm 55 tells us he'll sustain us. He'll get us through the difficult valleys if we cast our cares upon him. Our burdens, our anxieties, our worries, our fears, give them to him. Give them to him. He wants to take your burdens and let you walk free out of the chains that so often we want to bind ourselves in. Are you with me? Psalm 34 tells us that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and that he hears us when we cry out to him. He hears us. That's the, that's the love of God and he wants you. He wants to be with you. But guess what? Oh, there's more. There's much more. Are you ready? Here we go. Keep writing fast. A close relationship with God has these amazing blessings, these amazing benefits. 2 Corinthians 9 and Philippians 4 tells us that God wants to abundantly give us his grace and supply everything that we need to serve him. Lamentations 3 tells us that his mercies are new every morning. You've got new mercies today. You'll have new mercies tomorrow. And he keeps pouring out his mercy on you because he's so plenteous in mercy. He overflows with mercy. And that passage also says, great is thy faithfulness. Isn't that right? Great is thy faithfulness, O God. In Matthew 28 and Hebrews 13, God tells us he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will be with us to the end. It's a benefit, a blessing of a relationship with God. In Philippians 4, he told us he'll give us a peace that passes all understanding. I needed that peace this week. And he gave that to me. 
In 2 Timothy 1, God said he's given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And then he uses these precious gifts in us to help us overcome the challenges that life brings. You've got the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind in you if you know God the Father. These are the blessings, the benefits of children of God that follow in the steps of Jesus. He wants us, but there's more. For in John 14, Jesus told us he would not leave us comfortless in verse 18. And then he said he would send his Holy Spirit to dwell in us, to comfort us, to guide us, to point us to Jesus. Aren't you glad you've got the Holy Spirit of God in you? Always pointing you to Jesus. Always reminding you of the promises from his word. Always reminding you even of something you might have learned 30 years ago as, as a young person. And somehow that'll just pop into your mind at just the right time. Like that verse I read, he says, I'm here, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. You got that promise, you stand on that today. Right here, right now, you stand on it. That's what the Holy Spirit of God says. He's always reminding us, and he's always pointing to Jesus. He's always saying, you got a Savior that loves you, you got a Savior that's standing with you, you got a Savior that's right at your side. Fear nothing on this earth, he's got you. God is so good, that's the benefits. Zephaniah 3, I love this. God rejoices over us with singing. Psalm 32 says he sings songs of deliverance over us. Say what? <laughs> God sings over you. I want you to think about this for a second. You mamas taking care of the little ones. Whew, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, whew, it's a tough one sometimes, right? And, and those of you that had little ones long ago, you, you remember. Uh, it, it can try your patience, right? We had our uh, grandson last uh, week for a couple of nights. Woo! That's a... <laughs> man, I was a, I was a sleepy boy then a couple days. <laughs> That's right. On those, on those days, maybe you're going through something difficult at work, sitting in your cubicle and you feel so, so stressed. God is singing over you. God is singing songs of deliverance over you. He's saying, I've got you, child. I'm here right, right in the midst of all of your struggles. I'm here. I've got you. I've got you. I'm God. I'm almighty. I'm with you. You're my child. I will love you to the end. Whatever you might face on this earth, he's there. Singing over you. What amazing. What an amazing couple of passages, right? Don't you want this blessing from God, these benefits that God has. Don't you want that? Don't you want that? Man. Stay close to him. Obey him. Follow in the footsteps of Jesus. These things are promised to you if you do that. They're promised to you. Let me, let me end with one very familiar passage. Turn to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. You may have read this psalm hundreds of times. You may have heard this psalm sung or preached about hundreds of times. And just like John 3.16, it's easy to, to just say the words and to just move right on by. Well, I've got it on the screen. It's going to be on, on two slides. And I want us to read this together. All right? Read it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all 
the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Isn't it good to hear God's children? We read God's word together. Whew. So good. Psalm 23, what a comfort for the flock of God. What a comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. He's the one that protects, that cares for, that nourishes, that unconditionally loves us as he walks with us. He gives us that rest and that comfort and that peace that we need when we go through trials and heartaches. We have the promise that even during the darkest times, when death casts its shadow over us, he is with us. Those times aren't easy. Draw close to him during those times. He is with us. The Lord even shows up big when our foes surround us. It says here he prepares a table for us, anoints us with oil, even in the very presence of our enemies. God showing his love to us. And they see that. They see his love. And then David finishes this uh, famous psalm with the promise that God will pour out mercy and goodness on us, his sheep, and that he will be with us, with us, with us forever. That's our God. That's the God that knows us and that loves us and that wants us. I I challenge you to read that psalm if you ever just need a reminder of the loving shepherd that you have. That's the the message. But I got a few thoughts to wrap it up, all right? We'll see if my closing is as long as my introduction, all right? So let me leave you with a few thoughts. Here we go. God knows you, God loves you, God wants you, right? I gave my life to Christ as a young boy. I kid people that I think I was born at church um, because I've been there in church all my life, right? But it still blows me away. It, it still just amazes me. It overwhelms me that God knows me and loves me and still wants me. It still overwhelms me. Through all of my failures, in spite of my sin, God wants to be with me. God wants to be with you no matter what struggles and failures and sin that you have had. Every one of you. Remember, he knows your name. Benny's calling you right now. Brenda, he's calling you right now. Looking around the room again, right? (laughs) Teresa, he's calling you right now. He knows, he knows your name. God loved you so much. I want to relate, I wanted a relationship with you so deeply that he went to the extreme to make it happen. And he proved it by sacrificing his only begotten son, Jesus, to die in your place. We read that earlier in John 3, 16. He clearly states that truth. God knows you. God loves you. God wants a relationship with, with you. But I, like I said earlier, he's left that last part up to you. So let me flip these truths around for just a second. God knows you. But do you know God? God loves you. But do you love God? And God wants you. He wants a relationship with you. Do you want? that relationship that God would have between you and he. Do you want that as much as he does? So let me close by saying this to my Christian brothers and sisters. God knows you right where you are. He loves you. He wants to be with you. He wants to walk so closely with you. Maybe you feel like a hot mess. Maybe you're discouraged because you've just gone through so much lately, suffering and sorrow and loss. He's inviting you today into his arms again, like those little chicks running to their mama. He wants to be close to you. 
Or maybe you feel like I have many, many times, desperate and alone or guilty or unworthy of God's love. He wants you so close to him. Don't believe those lies. Don't believe that. He wants to show you his love, to strengthen you, to use you to love others with his love. So run into those arms of love again. You know, you, you might be sitting here facing some real difficulties. You might be. Please know that this great God, our shepherd, wants to shelter you under his wings. He wants to bring your heart joy and peace and comfort and protection that only he can give. Run into those arms again. You'll find the help that you need. And then finally, for those of you that have never taken the step to follow Jesus, I beg of you, I beg of you, give your life to this God that knows you and that loves you and that wants a relationship with you. If you give your life to him, he'll, he'll forgive you and he'll erase all of those sins of your past. He'll cleanse you, he'll fill you with an everlasting love, and he'll give you new life. That's what our God wants to do for you. And if you're not sure how to pray or, or how to call out to God, it's, it's really simple. You can have salvation today with a heart that cries out to God like this. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins and I surrender my life to you. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died for me, that you rose again. I ask you to be my Savior and my Lord. Take over my life. Please forgive me. It's that simple. If you really mean it from your heart, you can be a child of God today. Whew. You know, we're going to have a time of reflection, invitation, a song that plays. And I just want you to let, let God just stir you and talk to you and and show you if you need to make any decisions today. In just a moment, we'll have a song that plays, and you can have some time either at your seats or here. If you need to pray with someone, you can grab someone and pray with them. Uh, you've got the freedom to do that and to meet with God. But I just pray that you really take heart the message today that God loves you. He knows you. He wants you. It's just up to us how close we really want to be to him to have all of those blessings as a child of God. So let's pray. Father, we we're before your throne and we've worshiped you here over your word and it's just so good to, to magnify you and all that you've done, to just cling to the fact that you are our father and that you call us your sons and you call us our, your daughters. You've made us your children, adopted us into your family. Oh, it's so amazing what you've done. And you did it. You gave us access to your throne. You gave us your presence through the sacrifice of your son. We're so thankful for Jesus. We're so thankful, Father, that you did that for us, that you wanted such a close relationship with us. May we just dive in and run to you. We're so thankful. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.